Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about ubiquitination of proteins and also we will be discussing about protein degradation. First of all, let's see what ubiquitination is. It is the biochemical process where ubiquitin protein is covalently linked to lysine residue of target proteins. If we see it diagrammatically, we see we have a target protein like this as shown in the figure and on the left we have a ubiquitin protein shown as a blue dot. And in this process of linking ubiquitin with protein which is initiated by enzymes and we get the ubiquitin attached to it in this manner. And it must be noted here the bond between lysine residue and the ubiquitin is the isopeptide bond. So in nutshell we can say proteins are getting tagged by ubiquitin protein on their lysine residue. But what's the purpose of this ubiquitination? The purpose of ubiquitination is to mark or tag the proteins for destruction or degradation. The ubiquitination occurs on those proteins which are misfolded or toxic proteins or on those proteins which are of no use in the cell. Ubiquitination also happens to be part of some signaling pathways in order to switch on and switch off the pathways by the destruction of proteins. So we say ubiquitination tags the proteins for degradation and the rest of the work is done by proteasomes which we will see later on in this video. Now let's jump towards the enzymes first that drive the ubiquitination process. First of all, we have ubiquitin activating enzymes. In short, we say it's E1 enzyme. This E1 enzyme links itself with the carboxyl end of ubiquitin enzyme through thioester bond. And this step is energy dependent, so it needs ATPs. Then we have ubiquitin conjugating enzyme, E2, which transfers the activated ubiquitin from E1 towards the cysteine residue of E2 enzyme. And finally, we have ubiquitin ligase enzyme called E3 enzyme, whose function is to transfer the ubiquitin to the target protein. Now let's see the mechanism of ubiquitination process in detail. The structure of ubiquitin protein is shown in the diagram, where we see ubiquitin attached to a carboxyl end. Then to this, the E1 enzyme acts on it in presence of ATP. And in this reaction, the ubiquitin is linked to the E1 enzyme, as shown in the structure by forming thioester bond with E1 enzyme. Then E2 enzyme comes in and transfers the activated ubiquitin from E1 towards the cysteine residue of E2 enzyme. Now the ubiquitin is conjugated to the E2 enzyme. And we have a target protein which needs to be tagged with this ubiquitin protein. So finally the last enzyme that's E3 known as ubiquitin ligase comes in and transfers the ubiquitin from E2 towards the lysine residue of target protein by forming the isopeptide bond between lysine and ubiquitin. And also keep this thing in mind that proteins can be monoubiquitinated, multiubiquitinated or even polyubiquitinated. So now we have ubiquitinated protein ready to be degraded and for this degradation process we need proteasomes. If we see the structure of proteasome, we have two alpha rings and also two beta rings which are sandwiched between alpha rings as shown in the diagram. This makes us the 20S proteasome. And to this 20S proteasome, the 19S cap is attached to either one or both alpha subunit rings. And this completes the structure, thus forming us the 26S proteasome, which is fully functional to degrade the proteins into peptides. Then the next step of protein degradation will be recognition. And the tagged protein is recognized by 19S cap when it binds to the ubiquitin chain and pushes the rest of the protein into the proteasome, thus recycling back the ubiquitin proteins and we get the target protein converted into short peptides by the action of proteasome. And also remember that there are some proteins, misfolded proteins, which are called prions, which need to be degraded, but are not degraded due to the resistance of prions for proteolysis by proteasomes. So this is all about ubiquitination of proteins how ubiquitination of proteins is done and how then proteins are subjected to the degradation by proteasomes. So this is all about it. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.